Here's the dilemma. We want to advance in our careers, we want more money, we're willing to hustle, but we don't want to burn out. We want to excel in our work and expand our opportunities in life, but not at the expense of our well-being. It seems that every time we push more in our careers, we immediately feel the strain. We're ambitious, but also exhausted. Is there ever a way out of this vicious cycle? Is it just too much to ask to be able to keep up with the demands of a high-level career while also consistently being able to take care of everything that we need? I've been watching Jujutsu Kaisen recently after jumping on the bandwagon extremely late and I saw a quote from Megumi recently in the third episode where he says something along the lines of all that we are given equally is an unfair reality. On this channel, we're dedicated to your self-actualization and liberation in the material world. So in today's video, I'm going to share some Jedi level tips that are going to help you strike that elusive work-life balance. These are going to help you surpass the constant push and pull between achievement and exhaustion. Because I am both very passionate about work and also just in my human experience going through life, I've spent a really long time researching, reflecting, and applying these methods. It's really helped me and I want to help you experience that flow of both working hard at our careers without it detracting from our essential life force. It's worked well for me and I want to help you easily achieve the flow of working hard in our careers and jobs without it detracting away from the essence of who we are. Some context on my journey with work-life balance. I've always been a hard worker and put a lot of thought into optimizing my life and systems and processes, especially when I started studying economics as my major in undergraduate. I've founded brands, products, and businesses as a creative entrepreneur myself, and I've spent the past two years working in growth marketing at a very high-paced, early-stage tech startup in the Bay Area. But the interesting thing is that the core of me loves a very slow, still, and quiet life where I can enjoy things to the fullest, go on whimsical adventures, and follow and be very in tune with my heart. Working in startup environments for my 9 to 5, being a creative and an entrepreneur myself, and balancing every aspect of my life, it gets really chaotic and crazy sometimes. I fought so hard to make it all work without physically collapsing. So from that lens, I'm sharing with you some of the best insights that I've accumulated in the past 10 years. By the way, if you're really interested in hacking work-life balance once and for all, you might want to check out a different video I have on my channel about the first principles of work-life balance. That is a ground level foundational video that I made on how to achieve work-life balance using the natural laws of the universe. So feel free to check that out after you watch the tips on this video. We're about to get into the practical, immediately applicable tips and actions. The very last one that I'll mention is one that I've gotten from a business mentor that works so well for me time and time again. That one is pretty life-changing for how you manage your time and energy, so make sure you watch through to the end. So let's get right into the first tip, which is to start with the design first. Our lives just go smoother when we have a plan, even if that plan isn't perfect or when it's subject to change. To self-actualize, to experience more expansion and liberation, you need to feel that you are actually on a journey with some sort of meaning and purpose and destination. A plan helps with that. When you have an idea of what you're working towards, it's going to give you inherent motivation and inspiration every day to keep on refining your work-life balance. And I love that Stanford University has a literal life design lab based on the concept of consciously designing your life. Through the foundation of our design, we can optimize our lives and work-life balance. I have and will be making more videos on this topic on my channel, so make sure you subscribe and Stay tuned for more. The second actionable tip is to set limits and stick to them. This is a super practical tip that you'll probably see over and over again in books or podcasts about how to manage your work-life balance and how to have a good work routine. Examples of setting time limits are setting sections in your calendar where you don't take meetings or it can be blocking off your work schedule so that you're in work at a certain time and out of work off, offline at a certain time. Another common and often counterintuitive productivity tip is that our work often expands to fit the time that we designate for them. I have always seen this productivity principle play out in my own life, whether it was when I was a student, working at a 9-to-5, or working on my own business. 
If you set limits and stick to those limits, you'll be surprised at how effectively and efficiently you can actually manage, prioritize, and get the work done in the time that you've set versus dragging it out and procrastinating. The third tip builds off of the second tip of setting limits. The third tip though is to set limits, but treat them and work with them experimentally. One of the first principles of work-life balance that I talk about, for example, in the video that I mentioned is balance. Balance is a biomechanical force and it's the first principle of work-life balance. If you're too rigid, including with the limits that you set, you can break more easily. And that's not the kind of balance that we're going for. The limits that you set on work are just guidelines, they're best practices. But of course, different situations and seasons will call for us to adapt. So my recommendation here is to have multiple rings of limits that you can adjust to give you more flexibility. For example, you can have your core ring of I will start work at 7 or 8 a.m. and I will leave the office by 5 p.m. But you can have a conditional ring outside of that ring of if this scenario happens, I'll expand my ring to maybe working another two hours after dinner. You can design like different kind of rings that meet your needs. And the key mindset here is progress over perfection. Sometimes when I try to really rigidly calendar block or set really rigid limits on work and I can't do it consistently, then it makes me feel like wanting to give up on work-life balance or give up trying to refine that balance. Instead, what I will do is take note of what's working, what's not working, and then refine it and create several types of limits that I can use interchangeably depending on the scenario. Life is adaptive, change is the only constant, so it's great to have limits and then to also treat those limits experimentally and create a more complex system that works for you. The fourth practical tip to help you elevate in your work-life balance is to keep around mantras and reminders of your own inherent worth. I am no stranger to inspirational hustle type quotes. I've had years of my life where I just drank black coffee and hustled away until I realized I was outgrowing that lifestyle. You don't need mantras or reminders to work harder unless that truly inspires you from the heart. Sometimes what you actually need are reminders of your inherent worthiness. And that is the worthiness outside of the value that you create at work. Because reminding yourself of your worthiness and your right to want to live a balanced life so that you can work effectively and just be happier and a better person overall, that can be a right. It all comes down to your beliefs and mindset. So I actually like to have mantras and reminders around my inherent worthiness to experience life in work and also outside of work. Use little mantras or reminders that you are a multifaceted and fully integrated person. This will help you subconsciously achieve better work-life balance by honoring your wholeness as you are. We must always love ourselves as work in progress and acceptance is also part of how we grow. The last tip, this is one from one of my favorite business mentors and it's worked incredibly well for me time and time again, is to focus on energy management over time management. I have videos on my channel about energy and how we can use that for our liberation and actualization. And I always also talk about how time and energy are two of our most precious resources. And they don't always linearly correlate. By that, I mean, given the same five or 10 minutes of time, you can get a vast variety of energy returns depending on the thing that you're doing. It's not a linear one-to-one -one equation. For a more practical example of energy management for work-life balance, find the productive, life-enhancing things that you notice repeatedly work well for you and make a list of them. Whatever you notice gives you a surge of energy back in the middle of a busy day, no matter how random or small it might seem, make a note of it and keep a list. Then look at that list and actively schedule those things in your calendar. Don't think about how much time it takes if it gives you a disproportionate amount of good energy back. Examples for me are doing a morning or lunchtime strength training workout because it helps me be more productive at work immediately. Another example is slowing down and really savoring a healthy meal that I love. Or it can be consciously and intentionally going deep into flow state on a challenging project that it, I enjoy and I know I'll get a burst of energy from completing it. If you're going through a particularly busy season at work, I know how difficult it can be to manage your time and energy there. 
I made a video called how to be productive all day long with some of my best tried and true tips. So be sure to check that out if it interests you. Let me know what you think of these tips for work-life balance, if you've applied any of these in the past or are thinking of applying any of these now after watching the video. I hope it was helpful. Remember, progress over perfection, and I'll see you next time.